this video, I'm going to show you how to make this Visco Girl cake. Hi, it's Carolyn. If you want to learn how to bake and decorate amazing cakes, then I would love for you to join me by hitting subscribe and the bell. So I'm going to show you how to make this Visco Girl cake, and I never heard of that. <laughs> I swear, if I didn't make cakes, I wouldn't know anything that's going on right now, because that's how I learn about the latest cartoons and the trends. But Kaylee is having her 10th birthday and she really wanted a cake similar to this one. And there's no watermark on this one, so I can't give credit. Watermark your cakes, people, so we can give credit to the original artist. But she wanted the same colors and there were a couple modifications. She definitely wanted a purple backpack and a couple other things. So like always, I'm starting with my cakes already baked, filled, iced, and they are in the refrigerator waiting to be decorated. I have videos showing you how I bake, fill, ice, refrigerate cakes. All of that is going to be listed in the description and any tools that I use and any other videos that I reference will be listed down there as well. And I will also let you know how much I charge for this cake. So let's get started. All right, to start, I need to let you know that all of my fondant, my marshmallow fondant has this Gumtex powder, Tylos powder, CMC powder. It's the same thing. It's mixed into all of my fondant. It's going to help the fondant set harder and make it so much easier to work with. I will link this in the description for you. So now I have a piece of non-slip pad underneath my cutting board so it doesn't slide around, an X-Acto knife, a wet paper towel that I could keep wiping it on, a dresden tool, and a little bit of water. Now I measured my cake and I printed this out. I printed everything out the size I want it to be. I rolled that pink fondant out a little thick and I'm doing my trace cut and smooth method on all of these pieces. So I laid that paper on top and I'm tracing this onto the fondant with my Dresden tool. Make sure you get the inner details as well. And then you can remove that and I'm just going to take my Dresden tool and deepen the lines. And then anytime I cut anything out of fondant, I'm going to make a shallow cut first. The shallow cut is a line that serves as a guide. So when you cut the entire thing out, you're not going to mess up that fondant piece. So I'm going to stick the tip all the way down to the cutting board after I make that shallow cut to cut this out. And then anytime I cut anything out of fondant, I'm going to smooth it with my fingers and my tools. So I flipped it over, smooth it from the back, smooth it from the front, and let's just deepen those lines a little further. And that looks good. I'm going to set that aside. Now I'm going to do the same thing for the foam part. So I have some thicker white fondant and I'm tracing all of these lines on there. Don't forget to get the inner lines as well. And then I'm going to deepen the lines with my Dresden tool. And again, since this is thicker fondant, I'm going to do a shallow cut first. And then once I have the shallow cuts, I'm going to stick the tip all the way down to the cutting board and cut the whole thing out. And again, I'm just smoothing the edges because the edges are always a little jagged whenever you cut anything out. So you really have to take your time and smooth your pieces so everything looks nice and pretty. And this, I want to press down onto that pink fondant. Do you see how the edges are kind of hanging over the cup? So while that pink fondant is still a little soft, I want to make those impressions, get a little bit of water behind it and stick that down. Then I'm going to do the same thing for the straw. I made the straw blue because that's the colors of the cake. She doesn't have green in the cake and I thought it would look a little weird. So I did the same thing, trace, cut, and smooth, and let's set that aside. Now I'm going to make the scrunchie. So I printed that out the size I want it to be and let's do the same thing. So I'm tracing the outline on here and make sure you get the inner piece as well. And then I'm going to make sure I trace all those little lines because we're going to draw those lines on there later once it dries. Anytime I cut anything out of fondant, I want to cut the center pieces first. It's so much easier to cut the center pieces and then smooth that out and then cut the rest of it out. And again, this is thicker fondant, so I'm doing the shallow cut, and then I will cut the entire thing out once I have that line. And let's smooth my cuts. So again, trace, cut, smooth, trace, cut, smooth. That's the name of the game. Let's realign that on top of the picture and set that aside. Now I'm gonna do the same thing for the backpack. I rolled that purple out a little thick. It's probably a quarter of an inch thick, and I'm tracing this on here. Make sure you get the inner lines. And again, do the shallow cut, then cut the whole thing out and then smooth your cuts. And now I have thinner purple fondant rolled out and I'm going to do the pocket on here as well, doing the same trace cut and smooth technique. And I decided to cut that into two pieces because I think it's gonna look better if the top piece 
overlaps on the bottom piece. And that looks good. Let's set that aside. Now I have some Wilton pink, some Americolor lemon yellow, some Wilton cornflower blue, and some Americolor regal purple. And I got that out of the refrigerator. The icing is solid. I'm not going to mess it up. I'm taking a wet paper towel and just cleaning off the cake board. And now I want to get a thin layer of all of these colors around the entire cake. You want a thin layer because I'm going to add some texture to it. You don't want it to be too thick. So once I have the purple on there, then I'm going to start with the blue and I don't want to really blend these colors too much into each other so I'm just carefully putting one above the other and then when I get to the top I'm doing the very top of the cake pink and then I will do it around the top edge as well and I want to make sure that icing sticks over the top edge of the cake now I have a piece of food safe plastic. I'm crumbling it up and I'm just spinning the turntable with one hand and I'm wiping it with the other hand. Now I don't want these colors to bleed. So every time I go to a different color, I'm getting a clean piece of plastic. So I got a new piece of plastic for the blue, new piece of plastic for the yellow and another one for the pink. That way the colors won't blend all together. Now I'm just removing this excess icing off of the top, just holding my spatula really straight to push it back. And it doesn't have to be perfect because we are adding this texture. So again, I got a clean piece of plastic and I'm just wiping it along the top edge and on the very top of the cake. And do you see how I'm letting it like hang over the edge just to clean it up a little bit? And that looks good. Let's put that back in the refrigerator. And for the top tier, I literally did the same thing as I did before, adding the color onto the sides using a clean piece of plastic every time I go to a different color. And then removing the excess icing off of the top and taking a clean piece of plastic to add the texture to the top. Beautiful. That looks great. Let's set that back in the fridge. Now I have some pink fondant rolled out really thin. Let's do the camera. So again, I'm doing my trace cut and smooth method on here. And it looks like there's a little piece here on the left and then a little separation and then a piece on the right. So again, I'm just doing the trace cut and smooth. Peel that back and now I'm just cutting those pieces out and then smoothing my cuts. And I'm holding these circle cutters up against that picture just to make sure I have the right size. It'll depend on what size you're printing this out, but I, I will link all those pictures in the description for you. So I'm just lining them up, looking at the picture, just making sure that I'm cutting these out all the correct size. And then I have a square cutter here for that square piece and a little piping tip to get that small black circle in the center. Now I rolled out some purple fondant, pretty thick, so I can get skewers through it, and I'm getting a little bit of water on the back of these pieces and stick it down. Now I want a little bit of purple showing in between both of those pieces, so when I stick this other piece down, I'm letting a little purple show through. And I decided to do another little purple circle the same size as this circle because in the picture it looks like there's a little bit of purple behind it. So I'm getting a little bit of water behind each piece and assembling this little lens part of the camera. And I'm just looking at the picture and making sure I'm making it look like the picture. Good. Now I'm doing the trace cut and smooth for all these little pieces. So I rolled that blue fondant out really thin, cut it out, smooth my cuts, doing the same thing for this pink piece. And then I'm going to use a, I think it was like a number six piping tip to cut some small black holes, circles, not holes. <laughs> and these tiny pieces are a little difficult to work with. You see how they like move all around the place? Um, you want to make sure you don't get too much water underneath either because you don't want that seeping out underneath. And then I'm just looking at the picture. So there's a heart in one spot and there's a square with a black square in another spot. And I think there was like a, a yellow star. So I'm just looking at the picture and just trying to make it look like the picture. And again, I like to hold the tips up to the picture to make sure that I'm doing it the right size. I have tons of circle tips and circle cutters that I can eventually find one that's the right size. Again, like the same thing with that happy face. Now I cut that yellow 
uh, circle out for the happy face and I have an edible marker to draw the little smile on there. And now I'm getting a little bit of water behind each piece and looking at the picture and just making sure that I'm putting it together the same way as the picture. And now, since this is thicker fondant, you know the drill. I'm doing the shallow cut first and then cutting the whole thing out. Flip it over, smooth it from the back, and then smooth it from the front. And we need to do the little picture on the top. So I have the thin blue fondant and I'm cutting the little rectangle out and getting some water behind it and sticking it to the thicker blue fondant. And then I'm cutting an, e an even blue border around the light blue piece. and smoothing my cuts and that will stick on top of there just like the picture and now I want to get these skewers in the bottom that's why I rolled out that purple fondant a little thicker and you want to twist them in there like a like a screwdriver basically flip it over make sure it's not poking out the front or the back and now I want to make the little strap so I'm using my ribbon cutter smooth that cut and I just want to make sure this is the right length and get a little bit of water down push it together, get a little circle on there. And I'm just, again, looking at the picture making it look like the picture. And then I'm getting some water where it's gonna stick to that camera on the side and stick that down. And that looks good. Let's set that aside to dry. Now I'm doing the same thing for the sunglasses, tracing the lenses onto that thinner black fondant and then I'm going to smooth my cuts. And then I rolled out some yellow fondant that's a little bit thicker. And again, I'm gonna trace this on here. And then since this is thicker fondant, I'm going to do a shallow cut first. And then once that's done, I will cut the entire thing out and smooth my cuts. Get some water behind each one of the lenses and stick that to make it look like the picture. I'm using my tools to get it in the right spot. And that looks good, let's set that aside. Now doing the same thing, trace, cut, and smooth, guys. <laughs> I always feel like, am I boring you? I know I say this all the time, but it's the same thing to make all these decorations. It's so simple. So I trace the letters onto that thinner black fondant, and again, I'm cutting the center pieces out first and smoothing those cuts. And then once I have that done, I'm gonna cut all of those letters out. And when I cut the letters out, I'm gonna smooth my cuts and then I'm going to realign them on top of the picture because I want them to dry to the correct shape. And now we need to put these on a background. So I have that thin purple fondant and I'm just getting some water behind each of the letters and putting them down. And then for the word vibes, I wanna get all the letters down first and make sure I get them in the right spot. And then once they're in the right spot, I'll pick each individual one up and get some water behind it and stick it down. And now I wanna get an even purple border around the entire thing. And again, once this is cut out, I'm gonna smooth my cuts. And that looks good. Let's set that aside to dry. Now I printed this out on my edible printer. I have videos showing you how I use edible images and I will link that in the description, but my circle cutter was too big, so I had to cut it by hand and that's okay. I'm getting a little bit of piping gel on the back and sticking that down to the fondant. Now I have this edible marker here and sometimes the ink dries out a little bit. So I have some black ink for my edible printer and I just dip the tip, if you will, <laughs> in there just to get the tip with that black ink on it. And I'm, tra I'm tracing all those lines that I previously made onto the scrunchie to make it look like the picture. And then I have the wider end of it. And do you see how I'm just using the edge? I'm not using the point, I'm using the edge just to get that outline on the outside and the inner part of that scrunchie and you don't wanna to touch that because the ink is still wet, so let's set that aside to dry. And now I'm doing the same thing. So I cut these out and I let it dry first, so that way when I'm drawing this on here, the fondant set a little harder and I'm not going to drag the fondant as I do it. That's why I like to add that Tylos powder first, let the fondant get hard, and it makes it so much easier to work with. So again, I'm doing the edges and just trying to make it look like the picture. Make sure you don't touch that ink because it's wet. Ugh, I got a little too much on there. I'm gonna show you how to get rid of that. I do it again on this bottom piece as well, right there. So when the ink is still wet, you can take an X-Acto knife and just kind of scrape it off and then I wipe that tip on a wet paper towel. You don't see me doing that, but I'm just trying to get rid of that excess um, 
black ink, if you will. <laughs> and let's set that aside to dry. Now I'm making the phone. So I printed out her screen, her home screen on her phone, and I'm just laying this on top of that and carefully cutting this out. So I wanna make sure that I'm not moving because I wanna cut her home screen to the exact shape of the phone. All right, so now you can see how that looks. Getting some piping gel on the entire back of that edible image, and then I rolled out some black fondant, a little thicker, and I'm going to flip this over, and you wanna curl it when you put it down so no air bubbles form. You see how I gently put that back down there? and then cut a straight line across the top because that of that little black spot at the top of the phone. And again, I'm just cutting this out, smoothing my cuts, and there you go, a simple iPhone. <laughs> now I'm doing the same thing for the name. So I'm doing different colors for each letter. So trace, cut, and smooth. This font is called DK Lemon Yellow Sun. I'll link that in the description. But I'm just tracing all the letters onto the fondant and again, cutting them out, smoothing my cuts. And then I rolled out some black fondant really thin and I'm lining these on there, getting a little bit of water behind each one, making sure it's straight and then using my ribbon cutter and cutting it straight ribbon and using my X-Acto knife to cut the edges and just smoothen my cuts. And that looks good, let's set that aside. Now I'm gonna stack the cake. So I'm getting that out of the refrigerator. The icing is solid, using my sewing ruler to measure the height of the cake. And then I'm going to mark my bubble tea straws with a marker and I'm gonna cut that marker off so the marker's never gonna to touch the cake. Get the straws in the bottom. And I have a video showing you how I stack cakes. It goes into full detail. I will link that in the description for you. I'm making sure it's level. Get some uh, buttercream down, make sure my hands are clean. And then I'm stacking that top tier on, cutting the dowel a little bit shorter than the height of the cake, and then I'm going to countersink that down into the cake board and cover that little hole with some buttercream. And then I'm going to cover the seam. So when I lifted that off the cake board, you could see there's a little space in between the purple and the pink. So I'm just getting some icing and just patching those seams. And luckily, there's texture in that icing so I can just make it look like uh, it was meant to be right <laughs> so I just patched those uh, seams and I'm using my spatula just to add a little bit more texture now I need to make stars she wanted black stars on her cake so I rolled out that black fondant really thin and I'm just making a bunch of stars with this star plunger cutter and once that's all done, I'm gonna set those aside. Now I'm making the strap for the backpack and I use my ribbon cutter to cut a strip and I'm curving it around and then cutting it to the correct size. And again, using the edge of the wider end of that edible marker to color that in. Now let's decorate this cake. I got that out of the fridge and I'm gonna get a little bit of icing underneath the camera where it's gonna to touch the cake and slide that in there, press that down and any icing that's sticking out, I'm gonna take a dry paintbrush and remove that excess icing. And I'm getting some piping gel underneath that little picture part that goes on the top. I put some toothpicks in the very top so it doesn't slide off and stick that down. And now the backpack, I'm holding it up, getting a little bit of icing behind it where it's gonna to touch the cake and stick that to the cake. I like to use icing to stick decorations to icing. I feel like it holds really well once you stick it back in the fridge and that icing solidifies. And then that top part of the pocket, I'm layering it, layering it over the bottom part and then getting some piping gel behind the strap where it's touching the backpack. Beautiful. Now, just getting icing behind these pieces wherever it's going to touch the cake. Not sure why it got so bright right there. Sorry about that. <laughs> and then I'm gonna use my dry paintbrush just to remove any excess icing that's sticking out. And again, I hold these pieces up against the cake, see where it's touching the cake, get some icing behind it and press it against there and use my dry paintbrush to remove any excess. And do you see how I'm letting that scrunchie stick out? I'm not putting it exactly against the cake. Now I'm using a toothpick behind there. I'm angling that down so it doesn't just fall off the cake. A little bit more support since that's a heavier piece. Get some icing behind it and then stick that down. And remove the excess icing. Now I'm getting some piping gel behind each one of these stars and sticking the stars all around the cake. and get some piping gel underneath the name tag and stick that on the top and just get a little bit of non-toxic glue 
around the cake board and on the back of that ribbon and wrap that. And there is the cake. How adorable is that? So there you go. You can see how I use my trace cut and smooth method literally for everything that I make on my cakes. And just like anything with practice, it gets so much easier to do. And also I forgot to put a number 10 on the cake. <laughs> So you can see it in the picture here and I literally did it the same way that I did the good vibes. I just traced it, cut it out smooth. You, you know how I did it. If you watch this video, you understand how I did it. Now this cake, the top tier is a two layer torted five inch cake and the bottom tier is a two layer torted seven inch cake and it feeds about 25 to 30 people. Now originally when Kaylee's mom ordered this cake, she wanted something special for her party because this is so sad, but a lot of the kids going to the party canceled because they were going on vacation and they were doing other things and not a lot of people were showing up and she was so upset and I felt so bad for her. So I went ahead and made this bigger and extra special for her. So Kaylee's mom originally ordered this cake as one tier to feed like 12 people and she just wanted that fondant camera on the top and everything else she wanted to do edible images. And for that, I charged $275. However, I made this bigger for her and did all fondant decorations. I really wanted her to have a special cake for her day. And we all know how much it stinks when people can't make it to our parties, especially when you're younger. So I just wanted her to have a special cake. So I charged $275. I did not charge more for doing this extra decoration. However, if I were to make this and charge accordingly, it would probably be around $425 or so. So I think that's it. What new techniques did you learn in this video? I would love to know. Leave them in the comments below. And just a reminder, I have a Cake Academy membership program out right now. There are three tiers to this program. The base tier is a cake pop tier where you can support me and help me make more content for you and get some free and discounted extras. Extras are things like PDFs and recipe books that I release. And the top two tiers, the cupcake tier and the dessert table tier, both have access to my exclusive Facebook group where I go live and I just have to say we are creating such a wonderful community in there. Everyone is so supportive and we're bouncing ideas off of each other and I did a marshmallow fondant live and next week I'm doing a live on how to ice cakes really smooth and perfect with buttercream icing. So I would love to have you aboard. I will put a link in the description for you. Please like this video if you liked it and if you are enjoying my tutorials I would be so grateful if you could buy me a coffee my link is in the description and I'd love for you to keep in touch on socials and you can check out my website and if you want to stick around you can watch this video next and hit subscribe and the bell if you haven't already thank you so much for watching I love you guys and remember it's cake have fun I will see you on the next one bye